Loki season two is officially over. So let's talk about what happens in the second episode and ultimately what Loki comes to realize. So of course, before we get into this, spoilers, and also we are doing the final commentary for Loki season two tomorrow. So if you guys are members, check it out. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a long one, and we're going to have a lot to say. And speaking of saying things, let's get to this episode. So the episode starts where we left off, and we're going to be looping and looping and looping again. Essentially, in this episode, we see the Groundhog's Day that we all figured we get in the last episode, but things aren't exactly as they seem, as Loki wants to figure out how to do this, so he literally takes centuries of his time to learn everything about the loom, how it works, how pretty much everything works. And he figures, well, now we're going to do it again. Here you go. And um, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It just never works. He even figures out, hey, maybe I got to go back and stop Sylvie from killing He Who Remains. He tries that. That doesn't work. But the realization is, is that you can't control infinite timelines. So their plan was essentially uh, borked. It doesn't work. It was never going to work. Infinite timelines can't be contained. So what we ended up seeing, the plan that they came up with, that Victor Timely was going to try, that anybody would have tried, was never going to work. And Loki realizes that he, maybe, and everybody else were all wrong. You need a sacred timeline or something like that. And something that can be controlled in its entirety, but also by somebody who realizes what needs to be done. That's not selfish. And this is where things get even crazier because this episode really does slow down and kind of take its time explaining a lot of things and going over things we know and establishing who Loki is. At one point, we even see him go to the exact moment where he's brought into the TBA and he's sitting there being interrogated. And Mobius gives him, you know, a nice little lesson and he realizes what Loki is truly about. And by the end of this, by the end of the episode, we see that the Sacred Timeline is, well, it's interesting now because we don't have timelines per se anymore. And we don't have the Sacred Timeline. We've just been looking at it all wrong as it's sort of like the life tree, if you will. And it represents everything that's going to move on forward, but without pruning. And things can now just live on successfully, we think. But the episode doesn't tell us what happened with Kang or the Kangs or much of anything. They kind of leave it open with a couple twists and turns and interesting places they leave characters at. Like by the end of the episode, Sylvie and Mobius are on Earth. Sylvie's looking out for Mobius. And he is just going to kind of uh, take some time to figure out what's next for him. And what's next for him is to reclaim his life. He leaves the TVA, which I thought was great. So the episode really is, I, was, I would kind of say optimistic at its core. And that's sort of the craziest thing about it and the biggest twist. It goes in a way you don't expect. And um, it's a quite crazy way that they go about doing everything. Very refreshing. 